Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Melissa. I'm here with Anita Good Design today to join you guys for today's live stitch out. I'm going to give everyone just a couple minutes to pop into the live video so you guys can tune in and catch up to what we'll be stitching today. I'm so excited to join you guys to teach a project that is actually coming out of our Anita's University 202 curriculum. Now I'm so excited to show you guys this one. Today we'll be making a little scissor holder right here that you see created with a quilt block. So 202's curriculum is an exciting one. If you have not done the class before, we're offering it on special this month. So it's originally $99. We've priced it down to $75 for you guys so you can stitch these awesome projects with us and learn a little bit more. But throughout the curriculum in Anita's University, you'll find all kinds of different projects based on quilt blocks. So today we're going to be doing a functionable project where we actually take a basic quilt block, um, we make some edits to it in the digitizing, and we end up with a file you guys receive in the class. So the class is a digital download, so if you have not purchased Anita's University 202, be sure to grab a copy during this month's sale. Um, I'm going to go ahead and dive into today's class so you can see what exactly I have for materials and what you'll need to stitch along with me. So I hope everyone's been having a great and exciting new year. And this is the first project I get to do on live with you guys, so I'm real excited. All right, so first things first, if you like your e-reader, Kindle, or P uh, PDF viewer, whatever you want to use for your tablet device to view the projects on, you can open up the tutorial that's included with it. I have a handy printed copy here that I just hit print on, um, and I'm going to follow along with the instructions that are included. So every section of 202 will include tips and tricks for you guys in the material as well as the picture steps so you can follow along. So I am stitching it out here in the video, and since this is a YouTube video, you guys can go back and actually watch the footage later. And so I'm gonna use these picture steps as I stitch out. So if you see me flipping pages, that's what's going on there. To start the project, we are going to need to hoop a piece of stabilizer. So for this project, we are using no-show mesh. So I have one piece fit to my hoop here, and I'm gonna go ahead and slide that into my machine. Now to do the project, I'm stitching the ladybug design, which is going to be stitch out number two. So that's scissor holder two in the university curriculum, and it will have little ladybugs. Here's a purple one to show you guys. Kind of hold that up so you can see, you've got some little ladybugs. That focused perfectly for me. <laughs> so there we go, that's the front side, and they do have a lining fabric that was done in white, but we're going to get a little fun today and use some colored fabric so you guys can see exactly what we're doing. So I have gone ahead and I have the two files on my machine, so we actually have to stitch the inside of the project first. So I have my inside file pulled up on screen and I have my stabilizer loaded. We will need a second piece of no-show mesh for our second hooping, but for now I'm going to leave that to the side. So if you have followed along so far, we got our no-show mesh hooped. And then we also on hand will have some embroidery threads. A pair of curved tip scissors is my personal favorite. And then some hook and loop Velcro. You'll need the hook and the loop. A piece of ribbon. The length is kind of up to you. I just visually rough estimated about eight or nine inches and then it gets folded in half. So there's a rough measurement for you guys. The materials list included in the PDF will tell you exact measurements as well. Um, I just kind of cut as I went so you guys can see how I did it. For my lining, I think I want to use the red fabric, so I have a nice small print red cotton and then a larger piece of the purple for the outside. So I'm going to set the purple aside for now. And we're going to go ahead and run the first step in our machine. So I have to take a piece of the thread color I want. We're going to do red. And we're going to go ahead and thread up our machine and then you can run the first step in the design. So as a reminder, if you're popping in, we are doing scissor holder number two with the ladybugs on it from Anita's University 202 curriculum. And we do have the first file, which is going to be the inside file loaded. They are separate files, just so everyone is aware. We're going to go ahead and thread our machine. And you can run the first step, which will be a placement stitch. So if you guys are new to Anita Good Design or you've not run any of our projects before, we always run placement stitches for most things so you know exactly where to place your fabrics or your materials later. So in this case, we're running a placement stitch for our lining fabric, um, and this one's done a little differently than a quilt block. So our second file will look like the quilt block, but this one's just going to be the lining. And of course, like everyone has, we have a little thread break, so we're going to just fix that. 
and that gives you guys time to catch up. I hope everyone's having a wonderful afternoon. Like I said, it's the beginning of a new year, so that's a whole new 365 days of projects you guys can get started on. And I'm sure some of you are already getting a head start on it. All right, I'm clicking away, but I backed it up by 10 stitches just so I don't miss any of my placement stitch. Nope. Hang tight, guys. We're going to check and reset our bobbin thread. So if you ever have issues with your thread catching, I'm going to crisis control while on air. You guys get to kind of see what I'm doing. So I snip any extra thread I have going on. Again, if you're tuning in, you guys, we're doing the Anita's University 202 curriculum, which is running on a special this month. So it's normally $99 for the whole curriculum, but we're actually dropping it down to $75 for you guys. So you can stitch all the great projects and the quilt blocks that come in the book. And it is a digital download, just to make sure you guys know. But you'll come with all the PDF, it'll come with the PDF that I have here as well as the files. Let's see if this gives it a good go. <laughs> it would help if we threaded. It's one of those mornings, afternoons. See, I don't even know what time of day it is. All right, let's try that one. All right, we're gonna go. Fingers crossed, you guys. I just need a placement stitch ran. It's not sticking, Lauren. Oh, I think we got some stitches in. All right, I'll visually draw the box for you guys <laughs> so you can see, but we're just doing a square here so you can see where the fabric goes. And maybe once it has something to hang on to, it might give us a better stitch here. But hopefully yours came out a little better than mine. We should have a square here that is going to show us where to place our fabric. So then our first piece of fabric is going to be what we're using for our lining. And in my case, I wanna use the red fabric. Now we cut it a little bit bigger than needed just so we make sure we have about a half inch on all four sides. And I'm letting my excess hang down at the bottom. And then we will return the hoop to the machine and we can run our tacking stitch. Let's see if it does it for us. We set it in there. And perfect thread match, because I couldn't even see it. <laughs> I picked that thread matching the fabric just on a whim, and it happened to be the exact same color. Yes, the project I'm stitching, um, as well as some others that include the quilt block construction, are all coming from Anita's University 202 for those that are asking. So the book is based on different types of projects you can create with a quilt block base, um, and then modifying it so that you can turn it into fun projects, like the scissor holder we're doing, there's mug rugs, and pot holders as well. We're just having difficulty today with this machine. Let's see, we're going to keep going while we can. Yeah, I'm going to try to get it running the stacking stitch first and then we'll do some prizes since you guys are hanging in there. All right, let me get through this step and I can show you guys the Velcro. All right, so we're running our tacking stitch step still. I'm just having some machine difficulties, but this is the real world. So we're going to make sure you guys know where we're at as we're working on the project. Um, for our placement stitch, it only goes around one time. For a tacking stitch, our designs are digitized to go around two times. So for this fabric tack down, it's actually going to run the stitch two times. All right. We're going to try to get this working. Yes, we'll try switching out the whole box. See if that works. Nothing's jiggling or loose. So I don't think it's the machine, but we'll see. We're just going to keep trying, guys. All right. So while I'm trying to get this back up, let's do a $25 gift card so you guys have something to hang on to while we're working on this. Um, so if you guys want to do keyword ladybug let's do ladybug as the first keyword so you guys go ahead and comment ladybug under the video and we will pick someone at random for a 25 dollars gift card to our website so you guys go ahead and start commenting away while i'm working on this re-threading here 
I'm actually going to try a different thread too. That way when I run my next step for you guys, you'll see where I'm running it. So we have completed the placement and the tack down for our lining fabric. I now am going to run the next step, which is going to be the placement stitch for a piece of Velcro. So we're going to make sure we're on the right one. So I am on machine step three, just so you guys can follow along. And we are going to try to run the placement stitch for the Velcro. Again, the keyword right now is ladybug, so you guys can enter it in the comment section. And we got our placement stitch, <laughs> so that's a good sign. Might have just needed a new bobbin. All right, I'm gonna pull it out of the machine so you guys can see exactly where I'm placing things. Um, I do recommend having some handy dandy tape nearby. I like to use the Imperfect Embroidery Pink Tape by R&K. Um, so I'm gonna take some of that and I'm going to find my little pieces of hook and loop tape or the Velcro that I have. Now which piece you use for the lining versus the outside doesn't matter. Just use the opposite of whatever you used the first time. I'm going to lay the softer version of the Velcro, which is the loop. And I'm going to go ahead and plop that over my placement stitch and use some tape to help secure it in place. So now it should look kind of like that. And if your design pulled up in the same orientation as me, it should be what would be your upper right hand corner for that. If it's rotated, just work with it rotated in the hoop. Um, same instructions for the most part. And now we're going to proceed to run the tacking stitch step. Now if you do this at home, I recommend doing a white thread or something invisible to kind of conceal it in that Velcro. But I'm going to use purple just so you guys can see exactly where all the stitches is, are being ran and where everything is lining up. So we're running the tacking step for the Velcro. Um, Madison, do we have a winner yet for our ladybug keyword? Vicky Fox, congratulations Vicky, you are a winner for our $25 gift card. Be sure to reach out to customer experience at anita-gooddesign.com. Um, let them know you won in our giveaway and they will send that your way. Congrats Vicky. Yes. Yes, so for all the people asking, um, Lauren's in the background right now. She is going to link the Anita's University 202 for you guys so you can get to that product page. And it will list out all the other projects and types of blocks we'll create in 202. Um, and you'll be able to follow along as we stitch them out. And again, each uh, project will come with instructions in the PDF as well. So if you're running it at home by yourself, you have that as well to work with. So just so you guys see where I'm at, I've removed my tape. We have our placement stitch and tacking stitch ran. I know, I'm sorry, I'm quick on that. <laughs> it might have been a little blurry. And now I'm taking my scissors and I'm just going to trim away the excess Velcro. With all that mayhem in the beginning, hopefully you guys are at the same spot as me now. What's embroidery without a little mayhem? All right. So we finished embroidering the first piece of our project. So I mentioned this is done in two hoopings. So we have our first hooping finished. I'm gonna go ahead and pop it out and we can actually trim it to a half inch seam allowance. So I do have a little handy dandy table rotary cutter and ruler here. We're gonna attempt to do the sitting. I recommend standing when you guys trim, but we'll just do a quick chop on it so you guys can see the finished scale of it. So remember, we like to use a half inch seam allowance for all of our quilt blocks at Anita. That gives you enough wiggle room. So if something gets cut too short, we're not working with a very little edge. So I like the half inch. I think it's the best. But I know some experienced quilters and embroiderers out there prefer a quarter. So this is personal preference, but you'll always see Anita recommending the half inch. Got one more edge here. There we go. Get rid of all my excess waste here. And now you guys can see this is that finished lining file. So now that we have this piece done, we're gonna set it aside. And again, while we're in the middle of switching projects, I'm gonna show you guys that finished project, what it looks like. There is that lining. Again, this one was white on white. Our Velcro is down here in this corner. And then that front side was the fun one with the free motion, which is the part we're about to get to now. So again, this project is coming from Anita's University 202. 
and that is on special for you guys. I'm going to keep reminding you because they have dropped it down to $75 for a whole university curriculum that's uncalled for. Very excited. And it's like I get to teach it with you guys right now. So now I'm on to my second hooping. I'm going to go ahead and actually, while I'm thinking of it, change the design in my machine so that I have the correct one pulled up. So again, I'm doing ladybug design number two in the scissor holder section. And I'm going to hit load. All right, so we have that pulled up. And now I'm going to hoop a new piece of no-show mesh. There we go. Always make sure your stabilizer is nice and tight. We like to say like a drum. So if you flick it and it gives you that nice satisfactory boink, you know it's good to go. All right, so I'm going to run the placement stitch, or in this case, since it's kind of like a quilt block, it would be known as a squaring stitch. Um, the first step in that design is going to help indicate where we lay the batting. So I mentioned earlier in our beginning overview of the quick materials that I have on hand, I do have some quilt batting here, as well as our base fabric. It's hot in here today, you guys. I hope everyone has wonderful weather wherever they're tuning in. And again, I have another thread break, so tune in and tell me where you're visiting from online. Hopefully your weather is nicer than we had. A lot of rain yesterday. Perfect excuse to grab 202, you guys, and stitch some fun projects into the new year. Oop. It said today, Melissa, we're choosing to be difficult. All right, we got it threaded at least. We're just gonna keep running it. If there's a little gap in my placement stitch, you guys will know why. There you go, it's sticking, hopefully. All right, so I'm going to follow along in my picture steps while that runs the last placement. We finished our inside file, and now we are starting that second hooping. So with our first step ran in our second hooping, we are going to have that placement stitch box for you guys that's going to show where to lay the batting. So I'm now going to take a piece of my quilt batting. Um, for those who are asking or curious, I am using a bamboo, nice and soft one here. But whatever batting you have on hand should work because you don't really see it. All right, so once we have our batting positioned, we can go ahead and run the tacking stitch step for it. And I'm okay with having my hands in the machine, but that's a comfort level to you guys to just guide the material away from the needle so that there's no bumps or lumps in your finished project. Plus, it's always good to keep an eye on the embroidery machine. We've all walked away and it did something crazy. And you don't want to get this far into a second hooping and lose anything that you worked hard on. It keeps losing the <laughs> stitch right at the top. I think it's the top of the hoop, I swear. We're just going to have patience as a virtue, you guys. As long as you're patient with me, I'll just keep going. I told them it was their reminder to get their service. That is it. I am your reminder. Service your machine because this one needs some help. All right. Again, we just have to back it up by like 10 stitches. If you see me clicking and wondering what I'm doing, I'm trying to make sure there's no holes here. It's going. Maybe not. Nope. All right, bear with me. We're gonna pull it out again and check that bobbin thread. And that gives you guys time to run, trim, or grab any extra materials you may need. I'm doing the ladybug design. Um, if you missed the beginning, we have already ran our front file, which is loaded first. And now we are on the second part of the design, if it would cooperate. Ms. Kathy said you're doing great. Thank you, Miss Kathy. That's the motivation I need. We're trying to approach it with the positive attitude here and hope that that will just spread to the machine and it knows we want to stitch something. Come on, machine. It's a sign that we need service, that's for sure, because it's January and everyone should take care of their nice embroidery machines in the beginning of the year. All right, let's try this again. If Melissa could remember to thread the machine. It would help. We're all human. All right, thread the needle machine and hit go. We're just running the tacking stitch step here, you guys, for the batting so you know where we're at in the design. 
It seems to be sticking, we'll see. <laughs> I kind of keep saying that until it finishes. It would also help if this was running a little bit faster. I think it's running super slow. It is. We're gonna bump that back up, you guys. Maybe the super slowness is causing it to think too hard. I know they don't work that way. <laughs> I'm just telling myself whatever I need to today. A Little bit better. Okay, so as a reminder, while I am stitching this one for you guys, we are doing scissor holder number two. If you're tuning in, I wanna make sure you guys see what that project looks like. So we got this cute little quilt block that has a ribbon on it and a square of Velcro. And it has some diagonal lines, which I'll talk about when we get to the embroidery, but it helps you fold it and create this cute little case for your scissors. All right, I'm gonna call this tacking stitch good to go and move on from it, cause it looks secure enough to me. But we need to get to some embroidery here. <laughs> there we go, that's gonna be our fabric. So now that my batting is secure, secure being a loosely interpreted word for this machine, but hopefully yours is tacked down nice and secure. So there we have it, uh, the batting. And we are now gonna take our, again, curved tip scissors and trim away any of that excess batting from the tacking stitch line. And you guys can trim close to the stitches here, just try not to pop any of the stitches or you might lose some of your batting out of the edge of the block. Again, this uh, Project 202, the whole curriculum is on special, you guys. So originally $90 and it's dropped down to $75. So such a steal. We have our batting block trimmed now for you and we are going to lay our base fabric. So I'm gonna slide my hoop back in just so it's already set up there. And then I'm going to take my purple fabric that you guys saw I have here, and I'm going to do the same thing I did with the lining, where I give myself a half inch on all the sides, and then I'll just let the extra hang towards me so I can trim it away at the end. Got just about a half inch everywhere. And I'm going to run the tacking stitch step in a matching thread color. And since it came unthreaded a minute ago, we gotta re-thread it. If you guys are making it with me, I'd love to know what color combinations you're using. So feel free to tune in below in the comments with that as well. If you're stitching it, let me know what color patterns or combinations you're using. I'm running with a purple and a red combo. I think they look really fun together. Nice and bright. <laughs> guys, it just doesn't like me today. We're gonna try again. I appreciate the patience. And like I said, as I'm doing this and fixing machine bobbins and checking everything, you guys can be doing the same um, or you guys can get ahead of me if you have your instructions with you. And we're gonna give this a go. All right. Yes. <gasps> Are we swapping? All right. Hold on for two minutes. Hold on for like two minutes, you guys. We're going to put a bee back soon. We're going to check the needle on the machine and just see if it needs anything extra. But we'll pop right back on. So hang tight with your materials and we'll be right back. Prize right when we come back. Yes, prizes when we get back. <laughs> Setting that again. This is the new one that I put in a minute ago. Yeah.
It just had the wrong kind of needle in it, which I'm sure some of you have made the same mistake, but home machines use a flat back and there was a round one in here. And that might've been when it got serviced because we did try to service it. So <laughs> hopefully it should stitch smoothly for you guys. It looks like it's doing great. Um, you didn't miss anything when we cut the screen. I just wanted to check the bobbin and also check the needle and that seems to be the culprit. So hopefully we fixed that issue. But all I've done so far is ran the tacking stitch step. So thank you guys for staying on and staying Staying hopeful for me there. That's all I needed. All right, so there we go. Nice and a good match. So you can't really see the thread color there, but we have tacked down our fabric. And I do have excess. I am gonna trim that just so you can see the general square shape of the project, but I will leave a half inch or so. I'm actually leaving more like an inch of extra so you guys can see where that is at. And we'll leave the side floppy for now. But there you go. It's just kind of right around there for size. Um, so now we have done that part. We are going to return it to the machine and we're going to attempt to run the free motion part in a beautiful bright cherry red color. So we got this nice purple fabric or at least that's what I have been using. And now I'm going to swap out my threads. Pro tip, always cut your thread from the top so you don't run into machine issues later. I try to practice what I preach you guys. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and thread in our red and get started on the free motion step. Again, I'm doing scissor holder number two from the Anita's University 202 curriculum. We did the lining file first, which is a separate file, and we are now running the ladybugs. So this is step number four on the file for the scissor holder. And it looks like we're doing good. <laughs> Thank goodness. All right, so, so far we have done our lining. So you guys can see that real quick. And we have the piece that is going to be the outside of the scissor holder in the machine now. Um, if you just tuned in or came during our we'll be back sign, I wanna make sure everyone knows all the same information. So you'll hear me say it a few times. But again, I'm doing the scissor holder from Anita's University 202. This is our latest curriculum, you guys. It's based on quilt blocks and the construction you can make with those, as well as some really cool techniques we teach often in our different collections that we come out with. So everything from standard applique to more complex applique like watercolor confetti um, and free motion designs like we're doing on the scissor holder. And then in the end of that book, we actually show you some fun and functional projects you can do with those blocks and we include the designs for you. So it's chock full of tons of fun embroidery designs and projects that you guys can use. Um, you could even make a sampler quilt out of some of the blocks. Um, this collection, or I should say a curriculum, is normally $100. So we've priced it down to $75 to ring in the new year with some fun new projects and maybe some techniques you guys haven't learned. Now I'll do one more giveaway because I promised a giveaway as soon as we come back and I got so focused on getting that free motion step ran. So let's do hooray is the keyword because <laughs> we finally got it fixed. So the next keyword is going to be hooray. Um, and if you need help, that's H-O-O-R-A-Y. Hooray! Um, put that in the comment section below and we will pick another winner for a $25 gift card to our website. And just as a thank you <laughs> for staying on. If you guys are stitching out your project, let me know in the comments if it's going great for you or any better than it had in the beginning for me. It's looking fantastic. So even though I had some machine issues, the design is coming out beautifully. I also wanted to mention to you guys, we have a flash sale product that is happening this week. I have a little sample of one of them here, but if you have been an Anita Good Design customer for several years now, you may recognize this as Anita's University Pocket Pillows. So these came out in May of 2017, I believe is what I had written down. Um, and that is actually going to be on sale as well during the time period we have for this week. So this project goes on sale until Sunday. We're doing it at half off. So Anita's Express projects are normally $30. They are great in the hoop projects that finish up in 45 to 90 minutes or so. And they make great gifts. And this one actually has a little pocket in the front. And the collection will come with different pillows as well as different pockets, including different shapes and fun designs. Um, so this project is our flash sale of the week until this Sunday. So be sure to snag that while it's half off. Those are so cute and they work great for all kinds of things. So I mentioned the pocket in the front. You could use these for Valentine's Day or gift cards for birthdays or holidays or as another alternative suggestion, Tooth Fairy pillows. We have a Tooth Fairy collection, but this one was out first, and I actually think it's just as good for that purpose as well. So lots of fun ways you can use these cute little pillows. 
and that is the Anita's Express Pocket Pillows from May of 2017. And those will be on special till this Sunday. So be sure to snag those as well. Do we have a winner yet for our hooray keyword? Beverly Leg, congratulations Beverly, you are our chosen hooray comment in the section below. So be sure to email customer experience at anita-gooddesign.com um, and let us know you won our gift card drawing on the live video and we'll send that to you over email. I hope you guys are liking this project as much as I do. I didn't get to show you yet the functionality of it. So we do have our lining and it gets folded inwards. And then the way these work is you take your handy dandy scissors and they slip right in there and you can hang them. Now, depending the length of your ribbon, you can actually make this long like a lanyard or you could put it on a loop to hang on a little pin or a peg in your sewing room. Um, I also think they look really cute just added on to packaged gifts to people who also love crafting or making things. So you could tie it onto a present as an extra bonus for them. Um, but they're very cute and I kind of love that they open up flat so you could kind of disguise what it is until they open it and see what it does. So fun little extra hint or idea for you guys of what to use these for. You can store your scissors. They also work great with different types of scissors. So we do have a big pair here. They will fit as well as the little curved tip ones. So you got options. Now, if you guys are following along in the PDF that comes with Anita's University 202, we are running about picture step, I want to say we're on picture step I. So if you have the photos with you, we're running, um, following along with the pictures here. And I am running the free motion embroidery to go with the design. As a reminder, anytime you purchase Anita's University or any of our collections we come out with, the instructions will be included in the PDF. So you'll have that to follow along with as well. So cute, I love this red and purple combo. It's so fresh. All right, I'm trying to think other exciting things I have to tell you guys. Um, we do have some new tips and tricks videos that are being posted today and tomorrow. If you haven't seen those yet, we uh, frequently post some fun tips and tricks from the team of Anita here to help your embroidery projects come out beautiful or even more beautiful than they already do. So be sure to check out the latest uploads today and tomorrow. We'll have a different one coming out for you guys. Um, always good to help sharpen your embroidery experience. Oop, don't need my rotary cutter here till later. We have a couple more minutes left on this free motion. So that's giving you guys time to play catch up. So if you're still working on assembling the first part, or maybe you got a late start with me. You guys can play catch up while we do that. I think the needle is what did it, you guys. I changed that needle back to a flat back the way it should be, and no problems now. So I really think the culprit was just the wrong needle got put in there. And I'm sure I'm not the first person to have that happen. have that cute pocket pillow here for anyone who's still asking I do want to show you guys that I only have one sample here but they come in tons of cute patterns and colors this is the Anita's Express pocket pillows collection this came out in May of 2017 so if you were an all-access member during that month of 2017 of May you will have that design included in all-access um, otherwise it can be purchased separately it's normally $30 for any of our Anita's Express projects and we marked it to 15 so it's half off for you so grab that while you can. Again, they make great little present ideas or just fun little knickknack storage. You can give gifts or candy to people. Valentine's Day is around the corner already. I can't believe I'm saying that because my birthday is in February, but it's coming you guys. So you can make a cute pink and red version, give this to the grandkids or the little nephews and nieces and put some candy inside of there. So another fun idea for you to use with those pocket pillows. And that special is lasting till Sunday. So if you want the pocket pillows in the comment section, make sure you go there and grab them um, before that sale runs out. We're finishing up our ladybugs. We just got a few more here. I did want to make sure I show you guys the ribbon. I rough estimated it earlier, but let's see how long I actually cut it. 10 inches, I was an inch off. So I got a 10 inch ribbon here. That's what we're gonna use to help create the little loop. 
But like I mentioned earlier, if you want your scissor holder to be longer, more like a lanyard you could wear around your neck. So if you're in your workshop or your sewing room, you just need your scissors real quick. You can grab them out of your holder. Or you can hang it and put it on like a cork board by your station. Whatever works best for you guys. Everyone works differently. And as a reminder, the Anita's University 202, we are running the special for the entire month. So if you end up watching this video later on in January and you say, oh, I missed the scissor holders, you can still get the whole curriculum for $75 until the end of January. Um, and we will be doing some different live videos throughout the month, so be sure to check those out so you can see the different projects get stitched out. All right, Oop, one hiccup. That's okay, we'll take it because it's almost done. I'm gonna re-thread it, you guys, just so you know where we're at here. If I can get this thread out. There we go. It had like two ladybugs left and then it decided to break the thread. So we'll see if we can get those last two out of it. Now, if anyone's not running the machine on full speed, you might be playing catch up with me now. You might be right where I'm at. I am running it at full speed to hopefully save some time for the hiccups we had earlier. Again, the design's stitching beautifully. It's just the machine. Yes. This video and all the videos we do for the stitch outs, they stay on YouTube for you guys. So if you're tuning in on Facebook Live right now and watching the video, be sure to head to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date with all of our latest videos and releases. Um, but also this will live indefinitely on our page. So if you guys missed the instructions or you need to jump back to see what I talked about in the first half, you can scrub the video slider back and go check out the beginning of the video or come back and watch it later. So that will be a helpful tool for you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna hold that up just so you guys can see where we're at here. We got our ladybugs ran, there is our free motion design. Um, I did it in that red thread on top of the purple. And now we are going to run the placement stitch for the next piece of Velcro. So I'm just gonna keep my thread that bright red color again and run the placement stitch. And earlier, Always remember to check your lining piece, what kind of Velcro you use. We used the soft Velcro, so now I'm gonna use the hook side or the firmer side if I can get the placement stitch to cooperate. I jinxed myself by saying it was stitching fine. Let's see. All right. A little bit better. I can see where the stitch is, that's all that matters. So if you guys are at home, make sure you can see your placement stitch. If it's giving you trouble, back it up and run it again. But I can see exactly where it's supposed to go. So what I'm going to do now is take my hook Velcro and I'm going to lay it over that placement stitch for where it ran just now. And we're gonna go back to that pink tape I mentioned earlier and tear some of that off and help secure it in place. So we got our Velcro taped down here, as you can see. I'm gonna slide the hoop back into the machine and proceed with that tack down. Let's hope it stays. We'll see. And again, if you're tuning in and wondering which Velcro do I use, as long as you use the opposite of what you used in the lining file, it should be fine. So since I used the soft Velcro on the first piece, I'm using the crunchier or the loopier one here. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the tape since it tacked it down, it worked successfully. And we are going to take our curved tip scissors and trim away that excess Velcro from the tacking stitch. You guys are the best crowd because you're all patiently watching and I appreciate you for that. All right, so with it trimmed, there is my little Velcro square for you guys so you can see what that looks like. I know it's a little bit far away, but just so you have a visual. We are gonna return the hoop back to the machine and it's now going to stitch those accent diagonal lines. So I'm gonna show you on the sample again, just so you guys can see which lines I'm talking about. This one has it in a matching color. 
and this one has it in a contrasting color. So if you can see here, I'm trying to hold that a little bit closer for you guys, the scissor holder actually has these diagonals that come to a bottom point here. When your design loads, it's usually at a square instead of on a point, so you'll see the diagonals running to the bottom edge. Um, in the other scissor holder that I have as an example here, we ran those diagonal lines in a light purple, so it's actually matching the base fabric there, and it makes it harder to see. So I'm going to use a contrasting color just so you guys can see the guides for where I'm folding when we get to the end steps. Um, but just know you can match your base fabric color if you'd like, so you don't see the lines as easily. But we're going to go ahead and run them in the bright red, giving you guys all the options here. And for how my design is oriented in the hoop, it should be stitching to the bottom right corner. And we're going to make sure we're following along with our picture steps. I switch pages now. And the next part we're going to do is going to be the ribbon and the inside file as well. So I'm cleaning up my workspace right now. If you see me shuffling, making sure I have all the things I need. All right, so you're gonna need your lining file, some tape, and your ribbon. So once your diagonal lines have stitched, we're gonna pull that out of the machine. I'm gonna lay it on my work surface here, and I'll show it, I'll hold it up for you guys so you can see it once I have it ready. But there is our diagonal lines. Madison, I'm gonna pull it close to the camera so they can see that. So there you guys can see those diagonal lines where they were stitched out. And now what I'm going to do is first we are going to put our ribbon in. So we are actually going to take the raw edges of the ribbon and these are going to be poking out of the seam allowance. So we actually want the loop to lay inside of the quilt block. And once I have it taped, I will show you guys what I mean by that. But we are going to simply fold it in half and place it into our design. And I'm gonna use extra tape since I have a 10 inch piece of ribbon. So my loop is a little longer. And I want to make sure it doesn't get caught and stays out of the way. Also, pro tip for you guys. So your Velcro won't stick to other surfaces. When you go to tape down your ribbon, you can use an extra piece of tape and just lay it over the excess Velcro that's already tacked down into your design. You'll see what I mean shortly. But that way it doesn't stick to the other fabrics when we get to laying the other pieces down. So I know my taping looks crazy here, but we got our loop taped in the corner over there. And then we have the extra pieces, and I also put a piece, where is it, right there, over the Velcro. Um, that way the Velcro hook won't catch on to stuff. So that's just an extra tip for you guys. I have my ribbon placed, so now I'm going to take my inside file. Now the positioning of the inside file is super important because if you lay it wrong, your scissor holder won't close with the Velcro correctly. So assuming your design is oriented the same way as mine with the piece that's in the hoop having the Velcro in the top right corner, we are going to take our lining and put the piece with the Velcro face down in the bottom left corner. So the opposing diagonal corner of wherever your first Velcro is in the hoop, the laying down is going to go in the opposite corner. So for you guys to see here, I'm gonna kind of prop it up. There it is. And then I have my Velcro and it's down in this bottom corner here with the other piece in the top. So that kind of helps you visually know how to lay it. It will show you that in the picture steps as well. But what we're going to do now is use tape and secure the two pieces together. So you're gonna, whoops, you're gonna try to use the tacking stitch lines on the outside edge of the block to help align it. So I'm gonna line up my top and my right seam and then kind of go from there. And I'm just doing an example, so I won't be too finicky about placement here, but I don't want it to come out too crooked. All right. Once I have it taped, it looks kind of like this. Um, if you have enough space to tape on the left and the right as well, while um, still hitting the stabilizer or the hoop, do so, so you know it's extra secure. But we look pretty lined up for the most part. I'm off by like a quarter inch, which for some people they're like, gasp, that's not close at all. But I don't want it to be too crooked. All right, we're gonna just go with it. We're gonna run the tacking stitch step. This is the last step of the design, just so you guys are aware of where we're at in the machine. 
and it should go around the whole design while leaving a gap at the bottom. That gap is going to be used to help turn it, and I'm just watching this with my hands to make sure it secures the layers. It's a pretty good placement. Only off by a hair, but it will work for what I'm showing you guys. Again, before I finish up the project, a reminder for you guys, what we were stitching today is Anina's University 202. I was doing the scissor holder design number two, which was the ladybugs. And Anita's University 202 is going to be on special this whole month, so be sure to snag it while it's discounted at $75. It's regularly $99. And we will be doing different videos throughout the month to show you guys some of the projects in the 202 curriculum as well. So you can stitch along with us and be sure to grab those while they are discounted. We also have our flash sale product, which I will show you guys at the very end one more time. But we are gonna go ahead and finish up the scissor holder so you guys can see the finished product. Well, do you have what size hoops you're using? I believe this is a, I wanna say it's a seven by 11 yeah. is what it's looking like. I don't have indicators on this hoop, but I believe this is 7 by 11 hoop size um, for those who are asking. So we've ran our tack down. We have a couple inch gap at the very bottom of the design. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and remove it from the hoop. We have finished that part. And I'm going to take my handy dandy flat cutter surface and rotary. And we are going to trim down the block. Now I said a half inch earlier, but since this project is being turned and flipped, you can actually do a quarter inch since it's a finishing seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and do just about a quarter inch on all the sides. That was terrible, let's try that again. <laughs> and while you guys are trimming out your projects, I hope you finished up around the same time as me and that it came out beautifully. This will be very cute once I get all this extra stabilizer out of the way. Now I'm not being very perfect here with the cutting, so mind my crooked lines, you guys. I usually stand over my projects when I cut. <laughs> all right, so we'll get that extra out of the way. So at this point, your project should look similar to this. Here is the side where you see the free motion stitching, and then this was the side that was facing you in the hoop when we finished it earlier and we have our gap along the bottom. Before we flip it, I'm actually gonna take a pair of standard scissors and trim the corners at a 45 degree angle. And if you've done any project that involves turning, you know that this can help reduce the bulk in the corners of your seams. So it's just a little extra step to help make it look a little bit better. Nothing's working for me today. Even the scissors are like, nope, not for you. <laughs> All right, you guys. So glad everyone hung in there so long. Let's see, we got our gap at the bottom. The easiest way to turn it is to find one of the opposite corners, poke it through, and help feed it through the gap. So that is what I'm doing here. Again, you'll have your tape on the front side. Remember, we taped our loop in place, so just be delicate as you're turning not to rip the loop out. But we are going to use our hand, and if you have a turning tool, this is a great opportunity to break that out as well but I'm just gonna use my hand. Poke through the corners, and there we have our Velcro I taped over earlier just to protect it from catching onto things, as well as the tape securing the ribbon. So we'll just remove all that. There we go. And fix our corners at the very end. All right, so if you've made it this far, congratulations. <laughs> you followed along with the scissor holder. Uh, I don't have my sewing needle and thread for you guys, but at the bottom gap, that is where you would just do a little quick whip stitch or a little invisible stitch line to help close it shut. And then we have our lining side and our design side. And again, I will hold this a little bit closer so you guys can see we have those diagonal lines here. Oop, put it in front of my face so it won't focus on me. There we go, so cute. And so for finishing it up to use, again, we're going to close that bottom gap if you can hand sew it shut. You can also stitch it in the machine if you're not a big hand sewer. And then we have those diagonal lines on the free motion side. We are just going to fold the project along those lines. 
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have an adorable little scissor holder that we made it through successfully. So I'm so glad if you guys stayed for the whole length of the video. Again, remind, a reminder to you guys that this will be up on YouTube. So if you watched part of it or you need to go back to any of it, it will live on there for you guys to check out. While you're on the YouTube page, be sure to hit subscribe. We have some new videos coming out both today and tomorrow. Um, and every week, we're constantly putting out new stuff. So I know you guys want to be up to date with the latest on embroidery and quilting designs. Um, a reminder for the sales that are happening with today's project, the 202 curriculum will be on sale till the end of this month for you guys. So snag it at $75 before it goes back up to $99. And that will be happening all month long. Our flash sale product for today's presentation was going to be the Anita's Express, what is it, Notions Pockets? What did I just call this? <laughs> I just blinked for half a second. Yes, pocket pillows, not Notion Pockets. The pocket pillows, um, cute little pillows with that front pocket in it. There are, I believe, 10 different designs in this collection, um, including the instruction book for you guys. So a great one to grab while it's half off, normally $30. It'll be priced at 15 until this Sunday. So be sure to check out the links in the video description below so you can grab those items while they're on special. And thanks for tuning in, you guys.